Now, the world celebrates World Wildlife Day. Our attention has been drawn to the critically endangered forest antelope, the mountain bongo. The bongo, a mountain antelope which grazes through Mount Kenya forest and the Abadeas, has been facing extinction owing to human activities such as poaching. As the Mount Kenya Wildlife Conservancy plans to rewild the first five animals into the sanctuary on the 9th of March 2022, the cost of reversing extinction has also proven to be a steep climb. Helen Aura brings us more on this beautiful but rare forest antelopes. I bring forth life and I am home to both flora and fauna, including some of the world's most beautiful endangered species. But with time, human activities have defaced me, altering the flow of life from my source. But through conservation efforts, my beauty is slowly being restored, my pearls getting its rhythm back. I can breathe again. I can sustain life. Life to even one of those on the verge of extinction. The Mountain Bongo. The beauty and diversity of the Mount Kenya ecosystem would be incomplete without its stars, the magnificent yet critically endangered mountain bongos. This is the world's most spectacular mountain antelope, with an average bongo weighing up to 350 kilograms. Experts believe that there are less than 100 bongos who are roaming freely in the wild. An animal that was sick, then it has undergone treatment for some time, then it dies. That's even when you come here as a guest or as you will know there's something wrong to each and every animal keep up. And the best part is having newborns. You'll find everybody is happy to come to see where it is. It is 6.30 a.m. at the Mount Kenya Wildlife Conservancy. We accompany a team of animal keepers on their routine truck and monitoring program at the breeding and pre-wilding habitat for the mountain bongo. The animals are well acquainted with the gamekeepers, but it seems that our presence startled them and they retreated into the thickets. That did not deter the keepers' efforts to carry out their duty with due diligence. With a checklist at hand, we set out. The main parameters we look at is the health of the bongo and the activity patterns. Uh, in the health, we, we look at uh, does it that do the bongos are in good shapes in terms of uh, body cover? Do they have injuries? Are they showing any signs of illness? On the ecological part, we also monitor what the animals are feeding and how they interact with uh, uh, other species that are within the enclosures and how also they, they interact among themselves. Do collect fecal samples from the animal to check on uh, parasite uh, eggs in the fecal so that uh, we can be able to guide the veterinary interventions for the species. Technology is a great advantage for the team as it tracks the animals digitally, with at least 30 cameras mounted in different areas. It is not always a walk in the park for the keepers as they attend to the bongos. When an animal is sick, it's the most painful part for them and they can do anything. And for us, while we are trying to help them, they tend us to, they're trying to protect themselves, that's when they try to injure. So some of us have been injured. For me, I've only had one major attack, like I was injured in the stomach. After treatment, I tried to give it water. It tried to protect itself because it doesn't know that you are helping them. Gideon Wanjau, one of the village elders of Kanyoni village in Laikipia County, which sits on the foot of Mount Kenya, for him, a conversation on the conservation of the mountain bongo sparks nostalgia, eliciting memories of when he was a little boy. Kuna mahali tulikuwa tunaita Kafage huko juu. Huko ndio tulienda na grand my grandfather. Huko ndio nilianza kuona mbongo. No kwa kikuyu tunaisiita ndongoro. Ikiwa ina mtoto ilikuwa ngumu sana kuiona. Kwa vile inakusikia kabla uione inakusikia mbali. Na wakati huo zilikuwa mingi kwa vile kama mahali tulienda tulikuta kitu kama wanyama kitu kama watano hivi na walikuwa na watoto wandogo. And for Julius Ndirangu kutoka 1965 we wakati hiyo nilikuwa kama the salary sick ndio tulikuwa tunapeleka huko mstudi vudishwa hali ya kichaka 
Since the 1960s, this beauty began to fade off the earth as the Bongo population started declining, pushing them to the verge of extinction. This was uh, uh, largely attributed to poaching because uh, a bongo is a very big animal, so a poacher killing one will really get a reward for, for the meat and also the, the skin and the trophy. In 2004, when the Mount Kenya Wildlife Conservancy was founded, there has been a shift. We had 18 uh, bongo which were imported from uh, uh, United States of America, zoos. And these bongos came and they found some other 18 bongos which were held at the conservancy here. These animals were coming right from the captive setup set in the zoos. So they, had, they have to go through a series of adaptation phases for them to build the immunity that can sustain them to battle these now the, uh, tropical diseases that we experience here. The bongos have gone through those stages of, adoption, of adaptation and they have started breeding successfully. And also they are building their immunity progressively. For example, when, we had, when they had come here, some animals died actually due to tick bone diseases. At the Mount Kenya Wildlife Conservancy, the bongos strut across in all their majesty, boasting 8 to 14 white stripes on a brilliant russet coat. Each bongo has different markings on both sides of its cheeks. These are their fingerprint equivalents. The horns of an adult may grow to be 40 inches long. Each herd is led by a dominant male. The males and females differ in size and color, as the bulls tend to darken with age due to the testosterone hormone. The bongo is a browser, meaning it feeds from branches of particular trees. But within the conservancy, they are supplemented with loosened grass and pellets twice a day. It's exactly 7.48 p.m. and this is the last feeding or rather supplementing for the day. And I'm following the two keepers, that is Kinua and Damaris, who are actually ahead of me. Just come with me and we're going to feed Dani. She's a beautiful bongo. Oh my God, here she is. So one of the things is about Dani is she's a loner and she stays in this boma by herself. Look at her. Can she feed from my hand? No. She's too shy. Welcome, Danny. Look at Danny. She's so beautiful. They are active in the evening, maybe up to 10 in the night. And then they are also active like from 4, p 4 a.m. up to 8. Um, so we try to feed them according to the, their natural rhythm. Loss of habitat has also played a huge role in their decline due to deforestation. This is just a section of the 776 pristine forest sanctuary, which has been set aside for the conservation efforts of the critically endangered mountain bongo to rehabilitate it to what was once its natural habitat. The Conservancy has also begun creating awareness among the local communities through reforestation and education. We are convinced that this area will support the survival of the bongo. There is permanent water, so food is in abundance. So this sanctuary is now going to help us come to the, the last stage of the rewilding of the bongo. We allow them now to exercise full independence and also to interact now, exercise their social dynam dynamics without any human interference. How a nyama kama sasa hawa wako hapa kwa game lunch. Wakirudi cho forest. Waweke we wins. Wakirudi maeneo. Poachers watakula. Tutakuwa tukisema kuna bongo zilikuwa katika Kenya. Kuna dongolo zilikuwa Kenya. According to the 2019 to 2023 recovery and action plan for Kenya on the mountain bongo, the goal is to have a minimum national population of 730 bongos in the next 50 years.
The Conservancy aims to increase the current Bongo population from 64 to 70 by the end of 2022 through selective breeding. On the other hand, recovery of an animal which is on the verge of extinction has proved that deep pockets are essential. It has cost over one million US dollars to bring those bongos from America to here and allow them adapt. Then, establishment of this sanctuary itself, then the overhead annual running costs to maintain the bongo living, uh, to maintain the bongo's health here, is almost 1.8 million US dollars that we are spending on making sure that the bongo survives. The first batch of five bongos will be released into the wild on the 9th of March 2022. Have, the Conservancy believes that once released, they will play a key role in safeguarding the Mount Kenya ecosystem. Ordinarily, the mountain bongo would be roaming freely in the wild, but due to threats that have surrounded this particular species, pushing them to the verge of extinction have forced the hands of conservation to confine them to this safe space where they can repopulate as they await to be rewilded. Helen Aura, NT.